Alan Cross joins me now. Alan is a music journalist. Alan, good morning. It's hard to put into words the sort of legacy that Gordon leaves behind, but what are your thoughts on this morning? Well, Gordon Lightfoot has always been there for us. I mean, we're, we're going back about 60 years, and maybe Canadians just became used to his presence and didn't really realize exactly what a towering figure he was, not just across this country, but globally. And my favorite example is that he was very good friends with Bob Dylan. And Bob Dylan has said on, on numerous occasions that he that there is not a Gordon Lightfoot song that he doesn't like. In fact, Bob Dylan, arguably the greatest singer-songwriter of all time, considered Gordon Lightfoot to be his mentor. And, you know, just, just think about that. Bob Dylan learned things from Gordon Lightfoot. He was his music was covered by Elvis and Sarah McLaughlin and Jim Croce and uh, tons and tons and tons of other people. He was the singer songwriter's singer songwriter. There was something about his voice, and even though he became famous for writing songs about trains and shipwrecks and throwing in a lot of Canadianisms into his lyrics. He was a, a global star, selling millions and millions and millions of records. And it's it's going to be, it, it's tough to think about Canada without there being Gordon Lightfoot, especially if you're in Toronto and you became used to going to the annual residency he did at Massey Hall. That, that's about as Canadian as it gets. Uh, but now we, we will not see that ever again. And And it is incredible to think about how long he worked. I mean, I, I remember announcing that he was canceling his last round of concerts, and I'm sure he was heartbroken to do so. What do you think drove him to work long after, you know, financially he didn't need to, he had achieved so much success? What do you think it was about performing before a live audience that he loved so much? He was a working musician. He always considered himself to be a working musician. Uh, I had a chance to interview him at the end of 2020 when he did a live stream from the Elmo Convo in Toronto. And we were in the depths of COVID at that point. But he was determined that pandemic or no pandemic, he had touring obligations that he needed to fulfill starting in May of 2021. And he wasn't going to let a little virus stop him from doing that. He was determined and uh because he felt responsible. This is what he did for a living. That's what he's always, what he'd always done for a living. And he was going to play those shows. So when word came last month that every single show in 2023 had been canceled, there was a collective uh-oh across mm -hmm. the country because Gordon would never cancel a show unless he absolutely, absolutely had to. I mean, there was in 2020, uh, 2003 when he had that terrible... Um, aortic aneurysm problem. There was another problem in 2006 when he had a minor stroke, a couple of other things along the way. But you really, those are the things, you know, an aneurysm and a stroke were the only two things that could really stop Gordon Lightfoot from, from performing. It um, was in his blood. I want to ask you one last question because you mentioned that he wrote about railroads and, and sinking ships. He also wrote a lot of ballads and love songs. Is there one song, Alan, that you think really defines Gordon Lightfoot, or are there too many to choose from? Um, well, I'll go with my personal favorite, which would be Sundown. And mm -hmm. the reason it, I, I will bring that up is because, number one, I like the song a lot. Uh, number two, it was a number one hit in the United States. And number, one, number three, there's a really interesting Hollywood connection to that. In the middle 1970s, Gordon Lightfoot was involved with a woman named Kathy Smith. About 1976, she moved to Los Angeles, where she became a drug dealer. And her uh, clients included Keith Richards and Ron Wood of the Rolling Stones. And then in 1982, Kathy Smith, the inspiration for the song Sundown, was the person who injected the fatal speedball into John Belushi. So there's a bit of Hollywood scandal to go along with Gordon Lightfoot's life. Yeah, there's a, a lot more, uh, so many layers to this man. Uh, Thank you so much, Alan. I'm so glad you were able to join us today. Alan Cross is, of course, a music journalist.